Welcome, welcome, welcome back everyone. Your loyal captain Gibbon Hundred has returned for another video for you guys today. And today we are continuing the story upon uh, <laughs> Sun Wukong Deku. This is chapter 2.5. The, the the interlude of in between time in between time. Hopefully I'm able to edit this video So you guys can see the intro and the outro this time But if not then you guys just won't see it and we'll just cut to the video But with that being said, hopefully this works y'all ready. I'm ready cue the intro All right, we are back ah, So last time we had left off everyone I had dumped Izuku, well, Izuku had actually traveled to the Naruto-verse. That's after coming back from the Demon Slayer-verse. The second world he's ever going to go to. This is the second world he's going to. And keep in mind, you guys, this is the start of the year of training. But, Izuku can be, can be gone as, as long as he wants from his world because time actually stops. So, Izuku can spend relatively a lot of time here and he won't actually age because this is not his own world. So, he'll, he can take all the time he, he needs to learn about this. But before anything else does happen, <clears throat> so let me get, let's get back to the story. So, um, Izuku had just now joined Team 7 that was obviously older. I didn't want to do it when they were younger because obviously that's like way too much of a time jump, so I didn't want to do all that. So I just said, so I just scrapped rep that and I made it when it was older before like any of the gigantic wars happened. And also I gave Izuku a tailed beast. His name is Roku Ryu. Which I'm going to show you guys later. Some of you OG fans might know uh, wh what image this is going to be when I pull it up. But for those that don't know, you're just, you, you're just going to have to, well, for those out there, if you know, you know. But if you don't know, then uh, you might want to do some research. <clears throat> Alright, anyway. So before in any of that, um, while Izuku is on Team 7, they explain to him how the world works and, and what uh, the, power si the power system is. And they explain to them that there that there's a thing called chakra, which is based off your life energy. And there's different forms of styles and uses for it. Healing chakra, there's all and well, yeah, there's different styles of it, like uh, and, well, also jutsus and hmm, is there wait? Ooh, I almost said something different. Jutsus and ninjutsus, like like fire style, fireball jutsu, thunder style. There's always there's a whole bunch of different wood styles, all that. So after completely filling Izuku in on the basic stuff, Izuku wants to know more about the history. So they take him to like a library so where he can study up and read. And let me tell you now, Izuku's power is already getting to, get, going to work on it. Because after just the briefest of, of literally flipping through the book pages, almost like, you guys know when you open a notebook and you just skimp and you just uh, um, open like on one side and you just let the pages flop to the other side. That's pretty much what Izuku is doing. And his body's already <laughs> basically, um, what's the word? Yeah, the, his body is conditioning him for the Naruto world. Pretty much, he's already uh, being set with chakra. So, um, oh boy, this is a uh, very, very, very scary. And the worst part about it is he's even learning forbidden chakra, chakra and jutsu styles. Like, and I mean a crystal style, blood style. There's a whole bunch out there, man. And since he could see Naruto's, like, uh, tail beast, a.k.a. Kurama. Ooh, this is very bad. So, oh, man, this is, this is just crazy. So, automatically, after doing some research, Izuku had already gained infinite chakra. And I do mean infinite chakra. So, so there is no limit to how much chakra he can produce. He can literally heal people within a wide radius. So, and the most useful jutsu he's definitely going to spam a lot is the Shadow Clone Jutsu. Also, his Rasengan. Oh, bro. Oh, brother. This, this here is just ridiculous. But for those of that that are wondering about the tail beast he has, I'll mention that later. Since I don't want to go through every singular thing that's going to be going on, because I have little short interludes I want to do in between this. Kind of like a little um, intermission because, okay, if you guys watch the Deadpool and Wolverine movie, then you guys know exactly where I might go with, and you saw Deadpool traveling in between universes for Wolverines, Izuku's gonna be doing a little bit of that on the inter on the interlude meantime, because going through a lot of worlds is a lot, is very tiring on me. But since I don't wanna do that all the dang time, since I don't wanna be, since I'm lazy and I don't wanna go through absolutely everything, I'm just gonna give you guys a, a brief short appearances on what Izuku can learn and gain. But the major worlds, I'm gonna give you guys a full taste like I'm doing now, like the Naruto world. 
So, <clears throat> Izuku going throughout the Naruto world is pretty straightforward and fun for him. Meeting all the old masters. Sadly, Jiraiya did. Sadly, you know what? Just for the sake of this, I'm gonna say Jiraiya didn't die yet because there's a lot you can learn from these old from these old masters, my 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 dude. You there really is a lot. So. Uh, I know, like, Jiraiya died and stuff like that, but just for the sake of the story, let's just say he didn't die yet. So, Izuku going around the Naruto world, learning about all these different styles, uh, jutsus, <laughs> and, chak and chakras, all this is actually pretty fun. And he actually gets to meet the other uh, users of the Tailed Beast. And this got Izuku thinking, because he's heard of them talk about the Ten Tails before. And well, yes, there was, there is a Ten Tails, but it's like a forbidden type of thing. And well, it's not exactly the best suited for it. And Izuku could just say like that, how he could help and everything. Oh yeah, also meeting Sasuke and gaining his own, um, god dang. Ah, his own Susano and whatnot. Yes, Izuku has his own Susano. And don't worry, I'll show it to you guys in like a little bit. So you guys don't have to go crazy about like, oh, I want to see it, I want to see it. You're going to see it. But you know, okay, I'm, you got, I already told you guys. He went to the Naruto world, learned all the jutsus, learned all, all about chakra, and learned all about the tailed beast. And just because he copied, like, he has his own version of every single tailed beast in his side of his body. So, um, yeah, he has his own tailed beast. And I mean his own, his very own. So we're just going to skim through that. So now we're just going to move on to the final battle because I know that's what you guys want to see. So let's do this. Bam. So we're here at the final battle, and is, this is Izuku's Susano. Because I know you guys definitely want to see it, and yes, it is go it is golden. Because Destin won, and I don't and because I don't see why not. <sighs> but for his own personal tailed beast, okay, here we go. Um, I'm gonna show you guys that too. <clears throat> With all this, I summon thee, Roku Ryu. Roku Ryu is the name of his tailed beast. So let's move. Boom, we're back, everyone. Now this is his tailed beast. Up, oh, hold on. Alright, sorry about that. This is his tailed beast. It's a dragon. And in case you guys that can't recognize the dragon, maybe from a little diff maybe from a different pictural image. For those that got it right away, give yourself a pat on the back because I'm proud of you. But for those who can't tell by this image, how about this one? Bam. Yeah, I bet you recognize it now. I bet you you recognize it now. But okay, since we're at the Ten Tails final battle, um, I'm gonna tell you right now. Yeah, Deku's tail beast is much, much, much bigger than a natural tail beast. Since it was created from its own chakra reserve, which is pretty much infinite, um, it's about the size of the t of the ten tails. Wait, no, it's actually bigger. Let me show you. Woo, we're back. So yeah, the ten tails would be bigger than that um pyramid, and or, like would be that bigger than that pyramid. Maybe the size of it of like a mountain of some such. But um, yeah, Roku Ryu. I, I know what the original name of the dragon is. I'm just not saying it for copyright reasons. <clears throat> Roku Ryu is like a dragon that can split the fucking heavens. And I'm not talking metaphorically. I mean literally. Like one blast from one beast bomb uh, from that from that thing. Yeah, you might as well count yourself straight. Or, like he won't send you to the afterlife. This will send you straight to oblivion. My god. But anyway, hold on a second. A little bit of, uh, of a quick thing before we can move on. Izuku actually seeing the Ten Tails and seeing how powerful it is, seeing it as how it's the mother of all the other tailed be beasts, he couldn't actually let that power go to waste and whatnot. So he had an idea, and that was to seal the Ten Tails within himself. So the others, since they're all like pretty much tired and injured at this point, Izuku had no problem going through with it. So he used his infinite chakra, chakra reserves, and he used Rokuryu, his own tailed beast, to actually seal the Ten Tails within him. And uh, yeah, he's able to utilize its full power. And I mean full power. Yeah, that uh, giant rabbit form. Oh yeah, the Ten Tails is in that form permanently because of Izuku's infinite chakra reserves. It can feed off of his chakra. But the thing is, the Ten Tails is completely under Izuku's full blown, full blown control. Because Izuku is so strong, Izuku is suppressing the Ten Tails and now he controls it fully. Damn. So yeah, Izuku just ended that war just like that, so quickly. Because he, he is that guy. So with the war being over and everything, everything is now starting to go into a, a land of peace. Oh yeah, if you guys want to know, this took like about five months 
in the Naruto world for like Izuku. I know, I just wanted to speed this crap along. So Izuku's been in the Naruto world for five months, but once he goes back to his world, like literally no time will have passed at all. Like I told you. <clears throat> So anyway, as technology keeps advancing in the Naruto world, it, when Izuku's about to leave, they actually give him something to remember their world by because if he, he probably might not be back or anything. But Izuku says that's not true. If he ever needs them, he'll, he'll call upon them uh, for their assistance. And, you know, it's a debt that they owe him, so of course, they'll definitely help him out. But they do give him something. They give him... What is this is exactly? A weapon. How about you uh, press on it real quick? Oh, okay. He clicks the button, and well... Holy, what's this? <laughs> a chakra blade. Now this is actually cool. I could get, I could get used to this. Izuku th looked at this. Dang, this weapon was actually pretty nice looking. <laughs> oh yeah, he could most definitely use this blade. So Izuku had thanked them and everything and decided to like wave them goodbye because it was time. He didn't belong in this world and he knew it. So, waving goodbye to everyone, telling them to live long lives and stuff like that, he ended up disappearing and going back to the world of My Hero Academia. But that's not where this story ends. This is only 10 minutes. Oh, no, we got a lot more left to go before, we, before we're done, y'all. So, after coming back, Izuku still realized it's the first day uh, like of the year of training. So, he's going to go through a lot, a lot of worlds to gain a lot of experience and a lot of things. So, this is the short little interludes, the, like, little multiversal dimensional travel that Deadpool did in the Deadpool Wolverine movie that Izuku's going to be doing really quickly, just to gain a few more items so I can make him a bit more lore, ac lore accurate on Sun Wukong. So, with that being said, let's get started. So, <clears throat> after, like, over the, sp over the span of a few days, Izuku goes to a few different worlds to actually gain a few certain items and a few other certain abilities. So, let's go right down the line, shall we? Here we go. Number one, he goes to the Adventure Time world where he meets Finn, where, where he meets Finn and Jake. This, there, yes, he goes to Cartoon World as well. He meets Finn. He meets Finn and Jake, but uh, but the, but after a while, because he ransacks their house while they're, while they're not there because he's Sun Wukong and he can do whatever the heck he wants. Might be stealing, but guess what? I don't really. Uh, it might be against your rules, but you might say, "Oh, but he's a hero." Deku doesn't. Well, here's my here's my reaction. I don't care. <clears throat> After ransacking their house a little bit, he finds a, a freaking broken sword and that he sees that he actually takes interest in. So he picks it up and he decides to keep it with him. And crazy enough, that sword happened to be, well, the demon sword. The demon blood sword. Yes, I like this sword. This was actually my favorite sword of Finn's. And you know what? I decided to give it to Izuku. Why? Because F you, that's why. And this is going to be his second, his one of his uh, most favorite actually weapons. Actually, within his top five, within his top five, considering what what it, what upgrades I'm going to give it and what it will be able to do. So anyway, so anyway, on that situation, upon getting the demon blood sword um, within Izuku's grasp, Izuku uses his powers to actually restore it. But that not just that, also feed it some of his power. So now the the uh, demon blood sword is actually able to shape shift into the weapons you see right now: a regular sword, and a spear. And, well, there's also many uh, other things that I'm not going to mention y just yet. Just yet until the uh, situation pops up for it. So, uh, next thing. Now, Izuku also heads to, like, one of the video game universes. And one of this being the Undertale-verse, where he meets Asgore and ends up taking his goddamn... Tr ends up taking his trident. Why? Because it looks cool, and I thought it would, and I thought it would be cool for Izuku. So, that's another weapon down. We're just skimming through this. It's just skimming through it. He's just going to gain the weapons and use them. Because they're awesome. And until he finds another cool weapon, which is the Blood Reaper from Shadow Fight 2. If you guys recognize this, this is actually one of the very best weapons you guys can use. I would know because I played Shadow Fight 2 and I used this weapon throughout the whole gameplay. And I was a master at fighting with the Shadow, with the um, Blood Reaper. Actually, absolutely super goaded weapon. You guys, oh my god. If you ever find yourself playing Shadow Fight 2 for nostalgia reasons, I recommend playing with this thing. Amazing. Izuku ends up going to many different worlds, and these worlds actually landed Izuku in the in the land of the underworld. That's right, Izuku actually went to hell, where he actually met. <laughs> I'm doing lore accurate Sun Wukong stuff now, so Izuku literally de defeated every little mini demon spawned up in hell. Literally met Satan himself, fought him, and defeated him. And well, even though he could have taken his pitchfork, he did. He didn't. He had Satan create a whole new freaking weapon for him, which was a scythe. 
also he had he had him enhance his demon uh blood sword from from the adventure time so now that sword could do many more it could actually izuku could coat it in demon mat with with demonic magic and well the sword it he can also enhance the sword with many different capabilities the sword itself the demon sword can can poison you can uh it can light itself on fire it can coat itself with an electricity and what else oh yeah also ice in order to freeze you so um yeah you don't want to be caught by that blade Ooh. also the sword itself if it slashes you it can consume your blood in order to get stronger gaining the abilities of said opponent so yeah when izuku used that blade on on satan ooh, it was not a good it was not a good day for him so yeah conquering hell izuku had gained immortal immortality for the first time unknowingly so um yeah that's also a terrible thing that's izuku's first time gaining immortality <sighs> damn conquering all of hell oh yeah wait Sun Wukong learned the secrets of immortality inside of hell. Oh, well, we can just we can just uh, say that happened anyway. So, next thing. And then other universes. Now for the next one. Izuku ended up going to the Ben 10 universe to take this sword here. This is from Alien Force. I freaking forgot the name of the sword. I think it was Av... 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 Or something. I freaking forgot what it was, but Asmus made this sword. Yeah, Asmus made this sword when he was younger. And among with its many abilities, after Ben had given it back to the multiverse, the sword was up for free gra grabs. So Izuku just ended up taking that, and whoop, now it's his. Yeah, lots of stuff. Oh yeah, also Vilgax. I swear they should have kept this Vilgax. Conqueror of Ten Worlds. He took his sword as well. Why? Because F you. Because he thought it was cool because of the way it was designed. And literally Vilgax's sword in Alien Force was actually a force to be reckoned with. It actually was pretty awesome. All right, anyway, moving on. Woo! These are going to be one of my favorites to use. And, yep, and I mean it. Izuku also gains the Blades of Chaos by going to the God of, God of War world. Like, why would he end up going there? Well, for simple reasons. Izuku would stumble in by accident, meeting actually Kratos and Atreus. This was actually during the God of War Ragnarok time frame. So upon running into upon running into him, Atreus would you know be curious upon what Izuku is, while Kratos would be you know uh, skeptical of Izuku for right reasons. And Izuku pretty much letting them know who he is, like a dimensional traveler and all that. He would actually be interested in Kratos's blades. He would be interested in the axe as well, but Kratos would not let him touch that under any circumstance. But it's fine. But he would just ask Kratos, "Can he see his blades?" Kratos would ask why, and Izuku would say he wants to copy those blades. And Kratos would say it's impossible these blades were forged, yada 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 yada, but Izuku just said, please. So Bre Kratos pulled out the blades of chaos, and Izuku uh, just said, I'm not going to take them from you, all I need is one, it's a simple, t it's a simple grasp in my hand. So just like that one guy did to give uh, Kratos the ability to create Ragnarok, Izuku had grasped the blades of the blades of chaos, and basically the blades of chaos went back to their original form within Izuku's hand. So yeah, he's got the OG blades of chaos fully upgraded these and i like them so yeah i'm giving izuku the the og blades blades of chaos because they're fucking awesome now i would have given him the norse version but you know they're still the same blades of chaos just a bit more powerful but i don't like how the norse blades of chaos is actually designed it takes away like all the ferocious and sharpness that these blades got i mean they just look cooler that way from in my opinion so izuku has the og blades of chaos fully upgraded with all of their upgrades being able to cast fire electricity uh uh, uh whatever any of that stuff is so but still sp after spending some time with kratos and atreus he also gets a few things off of them as well i don't mean he steals things he just learns some things like well for one he gains he gains the ability to re to self-regenerate so, yeah, Izuku gains himself a healing factor. It was about time I give him one. I'm not sure if Sun Wukong actually has a healing factor. I mean, well, I know he has Im layers of immortality, but that doesn't contribute to him healing. But just in case, I'm still giving him this anyway. So, hyper-regeneration, he can easily just do stuff like, like this. And what else? Oh, yeah. The Spartan Rage. I This was definitely one of my favorite things that I definitely wanted to give Izuku. Something to actually enhance it. So being able to tap into his rage, being able to enhance his strength beyond levels and levels of comprehension. So, um, woo boy! When Izuku uses Spartan Rage with Blades of Chaos, you're dead. Yeah, you don't want to be on the receiving end of Spartan Rage with Blades of Chaos. 
especially when Izuku's like that. All right. Anyway, now it's time to to backtrack until uh, until like some more OG game lore. So upon hopping through more video game lore and everything else, Izuku ends up running into the OG main man Asura from Asura's from Asura's Wrath or Asura's Wrath. I don't know how people say it. I say Asura. So yeah, going to meet Asura for the first time was an, was an immensely goaded thing because he did train with Asura for a while now upon learning his reasons, gaining access to his strength and also his rage. And in, that includes the Berserker form. So just imagine this, Berserker, this level of Berserker with Azuka's power with Kratos' Spartan rage and like the, the, the eight inner gates with zero backlash because Azuku learned that from freaking Naruto. Oh boy. Somebody's fucking dead. Yeah, it's beyond dead. Like I said, going through video game worlds like this, pretty cool. All right, anyway, moving on. We still got to keep going. There's still a lot more for him to go through. All right, now we're back here again. It was bound to happen to where Izuku was going to end up in, in, the, in his own, in own kind of based off video game. The game of Black Myth Wukong. If you guys haven't seen the Black Myth Wukong, then it was in my live streams. I'm not going through absolutely everything all over again. Heck no. But I'm going to tell you guys. Basically, Izuku takes the place of the Destined One within Black Myth Wukong. So, the Destined One, pretty much just imagine that as, as Izuku. And he gains all that experience and everything else. Learning all the skill sets and, and everything. And gaining all the other weapons and stuff that I gain. And just to keep you, let you guys know, I completely platinum that game. So, there's nothing I don't have. Also, Izuku's gourd that he, that he gains is absolutely just busted. So let me explain to you all what it does. This is the King Tang gourd. This gourd you get after completing all of like that journal, like you get all the pictures and everything within it. Oh boy, let me tell you now, it was a it was ridiculous getting this. Now, okay, I'm gonna explain how this gourd works in the game. This this gourd specifically, you have unlimited sips with this gourd. Basically, you drink it. But it's, it's, you only can sip it one time, and it, and it takes time for it to refill. I think 15 to 30 seconds, maybe. I don't know. I haven't timed it. But the gourd literally has unlimited uh, refills as long as you, as you don't need to spam the usage of it. But um, that's the catch. It takes too long to refill, but you only can sip it once before it's completely empty. But it'll just keep refilling itself, but you can only sip it one time. But for Zuku's case, that's completely different. His King Tang Gourd actually does have unlimited amount of uses. You know how you can only sip like in Gourds 10 or 5 times, maybe 8 or 9? But for Izuku, that number actually is infinite because we're going the uh, lore accurate Sun Wukong here, not game lore. So with this, with Izuku's Gourd like this, he can drink the Gourd as many times as he wants. With it fully restoring his health and his, mo and his mana, his stamina, anything else. Because yeah, now he has mana in all this. And also, with this ability, he gains the spells and everything else that you would also get in Sun Wukong. And, well, Black Myth Wukong. Those out there, you guys know what I mean. Rock, gaining Rock Solid. <laughs> Where is it? Ring of Fire. Immobilize. <laughs> uh, God dang, what's this? Oh, Spellbinder, which is, oh my god, literally busted. Cloud Step. <laughs> Pluck of Many, which is one of Izuku's favorites to use, and the and those little tiny clones. Izuku can make as many clones as he wants. There is no finite number. Life-saving strand, because, well, yeah, that. So you can you may be able to defeat Izuku, but guess what? He'll just come right back. And the transformations that you get. Red ties. Azure Dust, I think. Ashen Slumber. I forgot the name of that one. Ebb and Flow. Yeah, this one is pretty cool. Yeah. Yen Tiger. Oh, no, that's Ebb and Flow. Yen Tiger right there. Uh, that's Yellow Long. I forgot the name of it. Golden Long. That's the... Uh, dang, I keep forgetting. I forgot the names, but I know the quest. It's just a quest you do in Chapter 4. Oh, this is the same thing. Hold on. Ah, the horse guy. That's, oh man, that's pretty cool. And what is Izuku's favorite transformation? Finally, the, you know, the uh, the stone monkey. The, I forgot the name of that one. 
but it's one of Izuku's truest forms that he can tap into, one of his most favorited, favorited ones that he can, one of his, of his transformations. Also, Izuku didn't, when Izuku went through the game, unlike, well, wait, no, exactly like in Black Myth Wukong, uh, I'm also going to make these a part of his transformations because Sun Wukong literally has 72 transformations. He also gained the abilities of the mini-bosses. Also, also being able to defeat the generals, the Yao Guais and everything, he can transform into these guys. So the bosses that, you, that he defeated on the story, Izuku can transform into them at will. Some of you guys might be saying, oh, that's broken considering how many bosses are in this game. Well, the thing is, I straight up don't care. Don't care. Also, Fubin is like the literal easiest min secret boss to kill. If you died to Fubin, then you just deserve that. I swear to God, you just deserve that. You should not be dying to him. But yeah, every single one of these bosses Izuku can transform into, no matter who they are, especially this thing. <laughs> okay, except for the Great Sage's Broken Shell. This is game lore, but Izuku is stronger than this game uh, Broken Shell here. And Izuku can dish out the same level of disrespect that thing did to me. I'm telling you, man, this thing pressed me hard. Pause. But anyway, but like I said, Izuku also gained the weapons. The giant fight still happened. Oh, yeah, Erlang Shen. And, you know, the Matt Tiger. Izuku gaining Erlang Shen's mini spear was actually one of his greatest assets that, that he does. Because if you guys have seen, well, you if you guys see my live streams, you know what this sword can do. It uses a focus point. Izuku has infinite focus points, so he can do do the like the giant uh the giant sword the sword spamming spear thing endlessly. Not just that, also gaining the golden long staff, being able to strike opponents with thunder. You know what? Yeah, Izuku does get the royal Jingu bang, but it does but it, but it's but like before. Well, just like in the game, he gets game Sun Wukong's memories and everything. So, like, Journeys to the West and all that. Not the true, actual Sun Wukong. Uh. But Izuku doesn't really like the, uh, the, the Ryu Jingu, the, you know, Ryu Jingu buying. Because it doesn't feel like, it doesn't feel like him. It's, it was Sun Wukong's weapon. It's not Izuku Shimura's weapon. So, even though he'll use it, he wants, he wants something better to, for it to, for something to fit him. What's next? Oh yeah, he also gained Erlang. Not only does he get his spear, he also take he he also steals his axe as well. Because why? Because I can like that axe. It's pretty awesome. But anyway, yeah. Still moving on. Next. Oh, whoops! I almost forgot. While going through the game, he also unlocks all the all the relics of you know Game Wukong. So he has all those the little hidden abilities as well. With it being awesome. Moving on. Next. Also going to the world of Mob Psycho One Hundred, becoming an an all powerful Esper with infinite power. Yeah, I'm just I'm just throwing stuff out there, y'all. Just making Izuku all them are broken. Keep, let's keep it going, because on God, there literally ain't gonna be nothing in fiction to stop Izuku once I'm done. Absolutely nothing. I'm just gauging up his power before I go to any of the more too crazy worlds. Anyway, let's keep it going. And crazy enough, oh boy, Izuku ends up going to the world of One Punch Man. While he arrives there, everyone like thinks thinks he's a monster because he came out of a portal, but um. Upon meeting the heroes and, and meeting everyone else, the Hero Association, Izuku realized that they're actually kind of weak compared to him. I mean, sure. Some of them have some very interesting techniques like Bang and Bomb, who he literally, oh, after, who just like Garo, after seeing it only once, can literally, oh, can literally copy and, and defeat and beat them pretty easily. And this does get everyone's attention because, you know, eventually Blast does, shows, does show up and, you know, the same shtick ha actually does happen. So Izuku basically pulling a Garo and learning every single singular move out there. Hey, he even gets his own cosmic form, but it's not by the hands of God. It's literally just by copying it. So, um, oh crap. Until, like, because seeing how powerful he is... He actually challenges Saitama to a fight. Saitama, who's a literal parody character, by the way, who already broke his limiter. When him and Izuku actually start clashing together... Wait, hold on. Izuku creates like a... He creates his own pocket dimension where him and Saitama can actually battle to their heart's content. And upon it, crazy enough, Saitama can actually feel Izuku's punches. Because while Izuku's adapting, yes, Izuku gains a lot more um, abilities over time, uh, uh, guys. He gains a lot of stuff over time, and going through these worlds, I'm going to tell them to you. Oh boy, but just know. Oh boy. Yeah, just know that it's too much. So Saitama, a being who's a parody character, 
a manga who literally broke his limiter. Crazy enough, Izuku, Izuku's body adapts so much that just like Saitama, he also broke his own limiter. Oh yeah, so now Izuku truly is infinite. Gains strength just by literally standing there. He doesn't even need to work for it anymore. He literally just is that strong now. And eventually, uh, contrary to what you guys might believe, Izuku actually does defeat Saitama, finally giving him the thrill battle that he actually wanted. And Izuku ends up disappearing now because he goes to different worlds. He also goes to other worlds. Uh, I'm just going to do quick mentions of them, so let's just get this over with. He goes to the world of Black Clover but and gets his own grimoire, but finding like the use of magic in their world kind of redundant and dumb because it's, I mean, it requires a freaking book to use. But he still has Omni Magic anyway, so, hey, that's still a quick thing. All right, next world. Dang. Oh, dang. Well, y'all, it seems like I went through all the little interlude worlds that I wanted to go through. Dang, I didn't mean to go through all of them. Oh, well, I just got too caught up in it. But now, because since Izuku keeps going to different worlds, his body kept adapting and kept learning a lot more stuff. So now I'm going to have to show you through the power wiki what exactly else he gains while going through these worlds. And since he went through a lot, so I'm going to be just showing, I'm just going to show you guys the rest of them. That way we can, that way I can just skim through it without having to, uh, having to go back and show you guys every, every little time. So let's just go through these things, through the rest of them. And you guys, and then I'll probably end the video after that. Maybe. You know what? Nah, we're going to, we're going to keep it going. Woo! All right, y'all, we're back. So we're just going to go through, like, these powers and everything. Just read them. It's going to be brief, and then I'll just move on to the next thing. If you guys want to uh, see these powers for yourself, come on the Power Listing fandom or wiki and see them for yourself. That way you can see what Izuku has. But this is absolutely everything. If I showed them once before, I'm sorry, but here we go. We're just going to go through them all. And here we are. Superior Adaptation. Adapt to anything and quickly evolve. Kind of like how Garo does. But the thing is, Izuku adapted to Saitama's broken limiter. So the thing is, Izuku also has a broken limiter. So now there is no limit to just how strong he can get. So just like Saitama, Izuku is pretty much a parody. A walking parody. Straight up infinite. So, uh, next power system. Here we are. Arcane, arcane potence. Come on, stupid thing. All my oh the state of omnipotent over magic so all all types of magic I already I already said that all right next and here we are with the next one I think this is probably King's ability in One Punch Man absolute luck but hey have limitless luck come on that, that it's pretty self explanatory I don't need to explain that next next thing absolute superpower creation I don't need to explain that but in case I do oh boy let's just go down to it. Create absolutely any powers. Easy, said, and done. Moving on. Now, here we are with the more scarier abilities that Izuku obtains. Absolute Erasure. Oh, boy. Wipe away everything and anything on all levels. Don't need to explain that. Just moving on. Before creation comes destruction. Get off my, out of my face, man. Here we are. Absolute Superpower Creation. Absolute Superpower Destruction. Destroy powers on any and all levels. So, yeah. Izuku can do that as well. And here we are with the next thing. Sparking zero available now. Oh, yeah, I'm going to play. I'm going to buy that soon. Absolute summoning. Uh, come on. Summon any object or entity under your control. Easy. Because Izuku pretty much does that. Al already has that already. But he can do that too. He doesn't need to become the transformations from Black Myth Wukong. He can also summon them to fight, with, to fight for him. Next. Here we are next, Almighty Mind, one of the other more broken things Izuku has. Come on. That's, that can do anything. Yeah, so Izuku, I'm trying to make this Izuku lore at like the actual lore accurate Sun Wukong. You guys tell me if I'm doing a good job in the comment section down below because, you know, I'm, this is why I'm giving him all these abilities because I'm trying to make a lore accurate Sun Wukong, but I don't know if I'm doing it right. So let's just keep it going. Omnificence. 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 Omnificence or omnificence. I'm going to call it omnificence. Next. Create absolute anything and everything without a limit. Simple, said, and done. Next. Of course, true omnipotence. God dang it. Hold on. Stupid thing. Go down. There we go. What kind of Sun Wukong would this be if he wasn't, well, truly the... Truly, heaven's equal if he wasn't 
the omnipot if he wasn't omnipotent. So yeah, the one above all. Come on now, I don't, I don't really need all my yeah the state of being su supremely almighty and all powerful. Sun Wukong is the number one uh, candidate on the battle board, meaning you can't beat him. So I gotta make the Suzuku accurate to that. So hopefully I'm doing it right. All right, here we go. Next one. I think this is probably one of the one of the last ones. I'm not sure. Eternal evolution. <laughs> Evolve without measure. Pretty much, yeah, already doing that for him. He's still going to... Okay, the power to evolve endlessly with no limit, leaving the user in a constant state of evolution. <laughs> pretty much, yeah. Like I said, Saitama, he already been broke his limiter. Zuku pretty much is infinite, and just by existing, he's already getting stronger. All right, next thing. Primordial order manipulation. God dang it. No. Okay, the power to manipulate primordial order. I don't know what this is. Uh, okay. Also, the user possess an extraordinary and profound to wield and manipulate the fundamental prime primeval order that underpins the very fabric of existence. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Still going. Primordial chaos manipulation. <laughs> manipulate primordial chaos. The power to manipulate, yeah, the primordial chaotic forces of existence. God dang, yeah, we're still going. I'm trying to make a, a lore accurate Wukong here. Maybe he can do, like, because Wukong becomes a true omnipotent god at the end of it, so I'm just giving all this stuff to Izuku. And keep in mind, this is before his story even started. He still isn't even gone to the entrance exam yet. So, and he's already this powerful. My god. <sighs> Complete arsenal. Sorry, sorry guys. These things just keep coming to me and I gotta keep it going. So yeah, complete arsenal. I don't even... <laughs> the state of possessing absolutely all powers and abilities. Easy. Next. Next one. Eternal transcendence. Oh boy. What's that? The state of being in an endless state of transcendence. But, oh, pretty much he becomes Alucard. He exists and doesn't exist at the same time. Oh yeah, Izuku did travel to uh, Hell's... Hell's... God, no, I forgot the name. He traveled there and he defeated Alucard, taking all of his powers and obtaining him as a spirit. So uh, yeah, sorry, but your, fa but your favorite vampire god ended up dying to Izuku and Izuku now possesses his soul. Well, he has his soul in his arsenal. Next. Woo, we're back with this. Omni-lock. Oh, boy. The state of existing outside absolutely everything. Oh, yeah. So, damn. Yeah. Damn. Omni-manifestation. Stop popping up in my face. Man manifest oneself without limit. The oh, okay. So, yeah. He exists and yet doesn't exist at the same time. You, so, meaning you can't, meaning you, meaning you can't beat him, nor you, nor can you kill him because it, uh, endless amounts of immortality on him. Oh boy. With all that also being said, Izuku also ends up going to the Looney Tune verse and end up getting you know the Tune Force, which is possibly most broken thing in all of existence. Being with his limit only being his imagination, and with him, him already being as omnipotent as he is, giving him the Tune Force just makes this even all the more scarier. Oh damn! What am I doing? I know what I'm doing. Absolute life inducement. Come on. Give life to anything. Not even... Yeah. Next. <laughs> Absolute death inducement. Sheesh. Kill anything regardless of what the target is. Easy. Next. <laughs> Mental fairy. Man mentally manipulate reality. The power to mentally manipulate reality. The purest and original variation of reality warping. Base version of reality mind. Damn. Immutability. Be, uh, be immune from any alteration or change. You guys are going to see why why I gave him this one in like maybe, part, maybe chapter 3, chapter 4, I don't know. Chapter 3 maybe two, through chapter 5. One of those times you'll see it. Omni immunity. Immunity, yep. Be immune to everything. So, yeah, easy. Let's go. <laughs> absolute will. Possess absolute strength of will. Yeah, come on. It don't need to. Next. Absolute invincibility. <laughs> come on now. Oh boy. Inv uh, yeah. The state of being 
undefeatable and indomitable. So yeah, like I said, lore accurate Wukong, you can't beat him at all. Absolute condition. Possess lim uh come on. Dang it. Poss possess limitless overall capabilities and attributes. Ooh, goddamn. Absolute restoration. <laughs> Restore anything back to its original state. Yeah, I mean, come on now. Yeah, to its natural original state. Easy. Boundary manipulation. Where is it? He can manipulate boundaries. There it is. I was wondering where it was at. All right. Anyway, well, easy. Absolute transcendence. Wait, did I already do this? I don't think I did. But if I, in case I did, sorry, I think I'm, I might be doing it again. Transcending absolutely anything and everything. So, woo! And, th okay, that was pretty much it. That was all the, the abilities Zuku gained while going to those worlds. And every time he went to a different world, he gained each and every single one of those. The ones I sh the powers I showed you in the past, he's, in the previous parts, he still has. But the ones I showed you now go along with the world he's going to. And he already has all of that. But keep in mind, y'all, his journey's still just starting. He ain't not even done with the year of training yet. Going through all of those worlds, literally, I'm going to just say three months have passed. Yeah, only three months. And he's not even done yet. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention he also went to uh, the world of Bleach, getting all getting his own Bonkai and everything. So um, yeah, pretty scary. Oh boy. But because of this, now it's time to go to another another world. You know what? Now I'm gonna say a lot of uh, many many months have passed. I'm gonna give it close to like, dang, how many worlds has that been? Has Azuku been to nowadays? Man, it's like almost close to twenty at this point. Because he's been to game worlds, he's been to anime worlds, he's been to worlds like Beyond Fiction. There is one world I'm saving specifically before the sports festival because, you know, I want to make it a very good special. So, with that being said, there there's like an ancient, a big tournament of gods going on that Izuku is going to be partaking in. If you guys know what I'm talking about, put it in the comment section down below, then I'll pin your comment. But still, with Izuku gaining all these abilities, I'm going to say like the year is almost past now. Like, he still has... Let me see. Let me see. What did I give him? Uh, three more worlds, maybe? Yeah, he just... He, I, I said he got... He went to Bleach in two as well, so... Okay, we still got that. And that. Uh, hold on. Let me take a look, y'all. Alright, I'm back, y'all. Three. He has three more worlds to go to before we can start the entrance exam. So, um... Okay, this is chapter 2.5. Chap chapter 3, we can just make him go through the uh, chapter 3, 3.5, and 4. Yeah, 3, 3.5, and 4. It'll be the uh, last three worlds he goes to for just for now. Just for now. Until, so, we, and so we can finally continue pushing the story of My Hero Academia. But anyway, while Izuku is back at home, like I said, he spent time with Bakugo and his girlfriend, Uza. Hana Uzaki, Uzaki, he gets the, the thrill of a battle once more and he wants to go to another world. So he gets his ass right the fuck up, opens a portal, and now he's on his way. But in this world, oh my god, you guys are going to love this because in the next world, on the next part, I'm actually going to go through the story instead of just skimming over it. So, the world he ends up going to? The world of Jujutsu Kaisen, baby. Next part, chapter 3. Here we go, man. La oh, it, it is going to be on. Chapter 3, chapter 3.5, chapter 4 will be the last three worlds he goes to so we can get so we can finally get started on My Hero Academia. But with that being said, y'all, we're going to we're going to have to end this right now. I probably won't be able to even put the intro and outro into this, but in case I do, be sure to like, subscribe, comment down below y'all thoughts. Tell me what y'all think. Did I make a lore accurate uh, a lore accurate uh, uh <clears throat> Lore accurate enough Wukong or is there or is there still stuff that I'm missing? But anyway, on that being said, peace!